above the town of Lucan on Chapel Hill Road and endlessly passed by busy people hurrying on somewhere in Portland is a plaque on the wall from over a century ago marking a little-known story, one that historians knew of but never really understood. The plaque remembers a shooting of Father McCartan in 1807, but it does not seem to be that remarkable to warrant such a memorial. So what was the real story? So I wanted to find out a bit more because I thought there might be more to it, like find out a bit more about what had happened because there had been a trial and there probably was a bigger story behind it. And the story that Darren found starts with a labourer called Michael Donoghue from St James Street in Dublin who had heard a rumour that a man in Lucan was hiding money in his house and he got together a disparate group of men to go rob him. But uh, the execution of it didn't go quite well. They set themselves up to fail from the beginning. This robbery included a crazy idea coupled with a lot of drink before taking a taxi horse and cab to Lucan. And things did not go well. So they went to a turnpike on the outside outskirts of uh, Lucan, which would have been down around where the Bali Alley pub is now, and up a side lane, according to testimony. So I figured they must have been on Tandy's lane. The story told to young Maura Cormack and Nelly Ronan of Presentation Convent Lucan in the school's project of 1936 added a boy witness. It was early in June when the robbers came to the house. There was a boy around the back of the house boy heard one of them saying that there was nobody in the house and they must be gone away. So he hid in the bushes beside the house until they were gone down the road. They ransacked the trunk and a few chests of drawers, went through papers and found nothing so they left empty handed. So now they're heading back to Dublin with no money and no way of paying the taxi man. Fletcher, Murphy and Larkin were a few yards before this and the deponent heard Murphy or one of the party cry out, George! which was the signal to stop some person. Deponent immediately saw a tall gentleman who wore dark clothes. The deponent stopped him and asked him for his money. He put down his hand to his breeches pocket, said not a word, when Donoghue snapped his pistol and shot him dead. So they all scattered through the fields, but at this stage the second group stopped to rob Father McCartan of his money and his watch. The lads met at a... Donahue's house and he split the spoils and went their separate ways. As news of the murder spread, we're feeling guilt for the fact that a priest had been murdered turned himself in. Walsh was later arrested. So they were held at Newgate Prison which is where St Mitchens Park is now. Only three of the gang were captured and one, Murphy, turned informer against Weir and Walsh. The trial did not take very long and the two were sentenced to hang at the very crossroads where they had shot Father McCartan not long before. And it wasn't uncommon for justice to be, uh, of, with an execution anyway, to be carried out near the scene of the crime. It was a, kind of in the, the, the vein of an eye for an eye. The, afterwards, um, a British newspaper states that their bodies were handed over for anatomy classes at the Royal College and that afternoon um, Christopher Walsh's mother committed suicide by throwing herself into a canal and that brings the whole sordid affair to the end apart from the various memorials that were raised. At the time the plaque was placed on Chapel Hill it would have been very expensive. So was this just a measure of the horror at a priest being killed? During the, the trial, um, it seemed that they kept coming back to the fact that it was, it was so serious because it was a man of God who had been murdered. I suppose at the time it would have been a big event. Like This murder was reported in England. Um, that could also be another um, reason for it, the, the notoriety and the fame that had been attached to it. So the story, while it may have kind of fallen into a bit more obscurity and the details have become lost to time, um, his uh, story has always remained in the background and whenever there's been um, some form of local history or local folklore study, the Father McCartan story always raises its head. 
So what we're left with is a memorial to a long-lost tragic murder, passed by both understanding and significance in a busy modern world. But for some, back in 1936, they still saw divine signs connected with the spot of the murder. Also at this spot is a pure spring. Some years ago it burst through the road where some minor cures occurred. It had to be closed, however, but still it ripples quietly down the hill in the channel where it disturbs no one. This side of the road is never dry, even in the hottest day of summer. 